What is up, guys? Welcome for our Week 1 battle of the NPL Majors. This is the first time we're having a Week 1 battle in Majors, even though it's our third time here. We are taking on David, or Magic, and his FC Poplio. You guys see his team on screen on the right side. We're going to have a layout for the actual battle when we do get to it. Uh, I just want to make sure of something uh, really quickly as well. Uh, make sure I'm on the right replay, and I am. Good. All right, so uh, as you can see, uh, David has a lot of really big threats to me on his team. He's got Mega Kang. Uh, Greninja's looking spooky. Terrakion can punch some holes as well. Cresselia is always a threat. Uh, he's got the Comfy, which has destroyed me in the past. Uh, Jolteon, really fast, really dangerous. Uh, Decidueye, which he really likes to bring with Speed Pass. Uh, not Speed Pass, but rather uh, Stat Pass uh, with Nasty Plot or Swords Dance and Baton Pass. Uh, he's got the Dawn Fan, which is kind of a hindrance to my uh, Tapu Koko. Uh, the Venomoth is always a very big threat, as I don't have any real uh, checks to it if it gets up Quivers. And uh, other little stray things like uh, the Skarmory for Hazard stack and the, uh, the Malamar can always be an issue as well. So you guys see his threats. Let's get into our team. So first one that I decided to bring was Rocky Helmet Como with Drain Punch, Flamethrower, Stealth Rocks, and Toxic. So this investment actually allows me to take Power Up Punch into, or uh, even Fake Out of course, uh, into uh, Ice Punch, uh, two hits plus two hits. Uh, so I can get off five Rocky Helmet hits essentially and still get up my rocks. Uh, and the Drain Punch is also pretty threatening to uh, the Mega Kang of course. Flamethrower is there mainly for Skarmory, it also hits the uh, Decidueye and the Venomoth, so his, uh, his Fighting Resists essentially. Uh, and his Skarmory mainly because Drain Punch doesn't do any damage whatsoever. Uh, and then we have Toxic on there to catch the Cresselia on the Switch, as well as other things like Decidueye or Dawn Fan, for example. Uh, even the Comfy, which is a pretty reliable switch into Como most, Como most of the time, especially if he sees Rocky Helmet. So uh, we are bulletproof, of course, uh, for any ball moves that he wants to run, like uh, Shadow Ball from, uh, from Jolteon, I believe, that covers that. Um, and other things so uh that's pretty much como it's pretty straightforward the nickname this week is miss me david because this is david's mon in miners he wanted it back he was gonna draft it and i grabbed it round three from him uh so that was kind of a snipe on uh on my part and uh the nickname is gonna change to c major uh if you guys know anything about music that is a scale in music so uh that's uh scales you know clanging scales anyway bad pun moving on we have lyra the um the meloetta lyra from uh from fairy tale that's the reference uh we got choice scarf psychic signal beam u-turn and trick so we have two bug moves on here uh because his team his main switch-ins are mainly bug weak uh things like greninja which obviously can take uh psychic moves uh things like cresselia as well and uh the malamar too so uh i wanted to cover all of those with uh with bug type coverage u-turn is for momentum mostly uh but i am minus defense nature as a result uh psychic is there because it hits the uh, the mega kang the terrakion the uh the venomoth all quite hard uh being that uh it's a little bit stronger than psy shock as well and then trick is mainly for the cresselia so that i can deal with it uh being able to trigger a choice scarf pretty much renders it uh basically useless for the entirety of the game so i wanted to cover that especially uh now i had i was initially uh timid on this set as opposed to mild or uh, whatever the minus defense plus uh speed nature is i can't remember it right now but uh, i am mild uh I, I wanted to cover max speed uh venomoth but i figured that he'd ev his venomoth to outspeed my arrow speed creeping his uh his jolteon uh and thus i didn't feel like i needed to uh to run timid as a result uh that's the main reason why next up speaking of mega arrow we have uh, terror uh coming in first week first time uh, Aerial Ace, Taunt, Roost, and Earthquake uh, with uh, quite a bit of attack. I have a lot of uh, Spadef as well and HP. This is pretty much to take uh, Cresselia's Moonblast because its its main coverage should be Moonblast for my team. He can run Psychic as well, which I've also covered with the CV spread. Uh, the speed is mainly for uh, for Greninja. Uh, with this Spadef and this HP, I actually take Water Shurikens really well from anything non-Life Orb or Specs. Uh, so I can even take a, a max hit Water Shuriken Life Orb after Rocks, I believe. Uh, I'd have to check that again, but I, I'm pretty sure I can uh, from uh, from After Rocks. So really good investment here. Uh, this is kind of my Cresselia stop. Uh, make sure it doesn't keep getting up Calm Mines. I can taunt it, uh, Aerial Ace, break the sub uh, after two uh, after two Aerial Aces, and then just roost off the damage and make sure that Cresselia just doesn't get more boosts. Uh, and I'm able to take its hits re really, really well with this thing. So uh, obviously this can check the Terrakion if it's not Scarfed. Uh, with Earthquake, I uh, can also deal massive blows to uh, to things like Mega Kangaskhan, Comfy, uh, Jolteon if it's not faster than me, which uh, I didn't expect it to be. Um, and uh, also just chip away at everything on his team. Uh, it's a good Venomoth check as well, as long as it doesn't get up to plus two, because it is one of his Zemons. The yellow ones on the right are the Zemons, so we gotta watch out for those. Next up, we have uh, Dwan Energy McDaniels here. Uh, the uh, 
the mushroom Amoongus, uh, named after Shroom from uh, from the Smash community, uh, one of, uh, very, a very good Smash player. Uh, and we got Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Hidden Power Fire, and Clear Smog. I tried running Natural Gift until I realized that it was a status move and it didn't work with the Assault Vest that I'm carrying, because um, I was going to abuse the uh, the Electric Terrain uh, and run uh, Natural Gift to hit the Skarmory, uh, but that doesn't work. So I decided to uh, to run Hidden Power Fire instead for uh, hits the Skarmory and the Venomoth simultaneously. And uh, Giga Drain is there just to uh, to hit the Terrakion, on the Greninja. This is my main switch into Greninja, by the way. Uh, I can take pretty much any hit outside of like un, uh, unboosted uh, or like boosted acrobatics with no item for whatever reason if he decides to run that. Uh, and then Sludge Bomb ob obviously hits his team pretty well across, can get poisons. Uh, it's my strongest thing to hit the Mega Kang. And Clear Smog is mainly for the Comfy because I am not losing to a Comfy again. Uh, I want to make sure that I have something to, to stop it from boosting uh, and then just Sludge Bomb it repeatedly until it dies. So that's, uh, that's Amoongus for you. Moving on, we have Captain Crunch, the top of Coco, Ferium Z, Thunderbolt, Calm Mind, uh, Dazzling Gleam, and U-Turn. This thing can put in a lot of work on his team. If you look at his team, nothing wants to deal with this. Absolutely nothing. Um, Jolteon doesn't like dealing with it once it has a Calm Mind up. Uh, Greninja dies, Skarmory dies, Terrakion dies from plus one Dazzling Gleam, Mega Kang at plus two takes a ton from Thunderbolt, uh, and Ferium knocks it out, I believe, after a plus one. Uh, Dawn Fan, even if it's Max Spadef, takes like uh, I calced on AV, actually, and I think it takes min 60 from a plus one um, Twinkle Tackle, so that's really good. Uh, Venomoth doesn't want to take the Thunderbolts, neither does Malamar, but I also have U-Turn for that. Uh, so th this continues the momentum core with uh, with Meloetta, and my last Mon as well has a lot of momentum going for it as well. Uh, once again, I sped crept Greninja. Uh, I think I should have just sped crept uh, Jolteon with my um, with my Mega Arrow, honestly, because then that would have made things a lot easier uh, on me, but anyway... We're going to uh, move on to the last mon, Silvali Water. So basically, um, Amoongus, if for whatever reason, uh, is weakened and can't take uh, hits from the Greninja uh, as well. Uh, if it specs Gren, for example, and locks into Ice Beam, I can switch into Arceus uh, Water. With this thing also covers things like his Dawn Fan, uh, because I have a lot of Fizz Death, uh, and his Skarmory, uh, seeing that I have Defog for his, uh, his Hazard stack. Uh, and the main reason that I'm bringing this is that it's my initial switch in to Crest. If Crest goes for a sub, two Surfs break the sub even after a Calm Mind. Uh, and I can get off a Toxic on the Crest and then Parting Shot out into my arrow is the idea behind this set. His team doesn't appreciate Toxic, uh, being that the only thing that can actually uh, eat it is um, Skarmory or Venomoth. And Venomoth I can just Parting Shot out on, so uh, that's the idea. Behind this set, obviously no recovery, unfortunately, but uh, I did say in my team builder that I would probably bring Silvali Water a couple of times, and this is one of those times. It's mainly to check Gren, though. Uh, it's not any kind of fire type on his team that I'm too worried about, so he doesn't even have a fire type uh, outside of Simsir, uh, and Simsir doesn't do too much to my team. It could have, uh, but uh, he didn't decide to, to bring it, as you're going to see in the battle. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hop right into the battle. I'm going to actually bring it up here on my screen, and then here is the wonderful layout provided to us by Frieslander, our... Uh, our wonderful graphics artist uh, for this season of the NPL. Uh, as you can see, David brought uh, Terrakion, big threat. I'm figuring Scarf, uh, just from the look of his team. Uh, he's got the Comfy, glad I brought Amoongus, uh, the Jolteon, the Mega Kang, the uh, Venomoth, and the Greninja. So uh, right away, I'm looking at the team matchup, and I'm like, okay, Coco can lead pretty safely against his team. Um, outside of Scarfers, nothing really outspeeds it, or the Jolteon, rather. Uh, Scarfers and Jolteon, nothing outspeeds it. I can get momentum on whatever decides to lead. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, start off here with Coco. He leads with Kang. I don't want to take a fake out, so I end up switching directly into my Como, and he predicts that and goes for the power-up punch immediately. Uh, obviously, T-Bolt would have two-hit KO'd, uh, and he would have done almost no damage to me with power-up punch, and his T-Bolt switch-ins were um, Jolteon. So, <laughs> I'm going to take a lot of damage from these uh, uh, these hits, uh, Ice Punch and whatnot, but I am going to get up my rocks, which are going to be really nice, uh, especially for the Venomoth, as mentioned earlier. Gonna go for the Ice Punch again, gonna lower himself to 18%. I don't want to take a sucker with anything but Coco, so I'm gonna go into it, I'm gonna fire off a Dazzling Gleam. Uh, so he's now gonna go into Jolteon, and he's gonna go for a Thunderbolt uh, immediately, and he's gonna actually uh, do a little bit of damage to me, 34%. I get off a U-turn, what I should have done there was uh, gone for my, uh, I'm gonna pause it right here. I, what I should have done there was actually gone for my Ferium, seeing that uh, he brought in Jolteon, he was unlikely to switch it out immediately. He could have Volt switched. But um, but anything coming in on Ferium was really bad for him because if the Venomoth is win con, then uh, it takes a Ferium into Thunderbolt and it essentially dies. So that would be really, really bad for him. Um, obviously, that's not what he did. He Thunderbolted. Uh, he didn't Volt Switch, so uh, Ferium would have killed off the Jolteon, which would, again would have been really, really nice. 
Then I would have been in with Coco against, uh, probably, I would assume Terrakion would come in after to try to revenge me. Uh, but instead, I go for a U-turn, and I get into Juan. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to Giga Drain on the Jolteon, and he's going to go for a sub. He reveals sub, and uh, first time around, I break it. So, I'm thinking, okay, the Giga Drain is probably a really, really close roll to not break the sub. So, instead, I'm going to go, uh, well, I'm still going to go for another Giga Drain on the, on the next uh, turn, but uh, he gets up another sub. That doesn't matter to me. I'm going to go for the Giga Drain. I see that it doesn't break, uh, and I'm going to go for another one trying to break it again. And he goes for a baton pass, and he baton passes this into not Yan Mega the Venomoth. I'm going to get off another Giga Drain. I'm going to break the sub because it was probably left with like 2 or 3 HP uh, after my last Giga Drain. And uh, now his Venomoth is in. And now I'm thinking, okay, there's no way that David ran sub on this too if he was intending to pass it from Jolteon. So I'm just like, okay, th this should be fine. I'm just going to click Clear Smog on his Quiver Dance. But David reveals the sub, and I'm like, oh no, this is bad. I click clear smog. See, my play here was to go immediately into uh, to Aerodactyl and take uh, whatever hit that he would go for. If he won for sub, I could just Aerial Ace into Aerial Ace and, and deal with his uh, Venomoth that way, and it would be fine. My uh, my Amoongus would still be at full. Nothing would change. Even if he got off a huge hit on my Aerodactyl, we'd be fine. However, I clear smog, and now he's behind a sub. And now I'm going to go directly into Arrow. Uh, and I'm going to click Aerial Ace on the following turn. He gets up a Quiver, and uh, then he's going to go for the uh, another Quiver on the following turn. And uh, I'm going to break the sub. And now the problem is that Tinted Lens Venomoth with a Z-move, Buggy MZ, uh, at plus two, Savage Spin Out knocks out Arrow. So now I'm faced with a very, very tough decision. But before I explain as to why I made the decision that I made uh, on the following turn, I'm going to show you guys a replay from NPL Miners. Uh, this is me versus David back in, uh, I want to say, early 2017, uh, and we were both in uh, NPL Miners Season 3. And um, it's Lucario, I just killed his Sneasel, and uh, his uh, his Thunderous comes in, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to go into Kiram, and uh, I switch immediately, he goes for the Thunderbolt, I'm like, fine, and this is his Zemon, and I'm Leftovers, so I'm thinking, he's got Phytinium Z, He's going to fire it off here to kill off my um, my Kiram. And then with his Gigalith dealing with my Deancey, I'm in very, very bad shape. So I got to switch out. And he predicts that, and he doesn't even run Focus Blast. He goes straight for Nasty Plot, and he's just Electrium. I go for Tailwind, he Agilities. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, this is bad. I think I lose. And that's exactly what happens. I go into Lucario as he Agilities again. And then he's going to click um, Thunderbolt on my Lucario, knock it out. And then I'm going to bring in my Kiram, and you're going to see that uh, Electrium Z, uh, Thunderbolt, um, Gigabolt Havoc actually takes out Kiram from 81. So I was like, I think I had this in the back of my mind somewhere. I know David did, because uh, he told um, he told a few people that he did. Uh, somewhere in my subconscious, though, I, I figured that David, instead of uh, making the, uh, the play that just makes absolute sense, which is clicking a sub here again, as I try to sack off him on to the Savage Spinout, um he would just fire off his Z-move, and in which case, he wins. If you look at my team, he just wins right now. There's nothing I can do to stop this sweep. He has sub, he has quiver, all of my, the rest of my attackers are all special attackers outside of this Aerodactyl. So, I'm in really, really bad shape if he knocks this out. I just straight lose. But if he clicks sub, I lose anyway. If I switch out, so it's it's a real it's a it's kind of a 50-50 for David. For me, it's kind of a 33-66, uh, in a sense that David can click sub sub then roost, expecting me to switch out. Uh, any of those plays work, but I thought David might just take advantage of the fact that that happened in minors, uh, where I switched out expecting the Z move. Uh, and that he would just uh, fire it off and kill off my arrow immediately uh, as I would stay in trying to, to keep his subs broken. And that's exactly what's going to happen, as David is going to go for the Buggium as I'm going to sack off my Arceus Water to the Savage Spin Out, and now Arrow doesn't die. It takes a max of 77, so I pressure out his Venomoth, he goes into Jolteon, I go for the Aerial Ace and knock it out. Now, here's... Uh, probably the worst part of the battle right here. He goes into Faraki on this Scream Scarf, obviously, or, or Shuka, anything of the sort. So I'm thinking, okay, uh, I gotta bring in my Amoongus right now, which I do, and uh, he goes for a Stone Edge, and he connects, he does 46% to me, misses the next one. 
and I get off a free Giga Drain right here. So I'm just trying to put this thing into a KO range of Giga Drain. Uh, what I would have done on the following turn was I, I would have uh, switched out to Meloetta, uh, sacked it off, and then uh, gone. he would still have to hit two Stone Edges on Melo anyway. Uh, and then I would go back into uh, to Amoongus and Giga Drain again, but then my Amoongus would have been left really, really low, and the Greninja is a huge threat. Uh, and my Arceus Water is gone. So uh, missing Stone Edge here was a pretty crucial for him. As uh, I get off a of Giga Drain, and then the worst possible thing happens, and he misses another one. And I'm able to knock out with a roll uh, the Terrakion in front of me, and now I'm back up to 91%. Uh, he goes back into Venomoth, and this time I'm actually going to click HP Fire uh, as he goes for Roost. And uh, I'm going to, because I figure out that after Quiver, I still knock him out with uh, with HP Fire, so it doesn't matter if he Quivers. And this time I'm going to go into to Aerodactyl. Goes for the Quiver, doesn't matter, he's going to switch out, he's going to go into Moi, Draining Kissing, uh, uh, Comfy right here, takes uh, a lot of damage, the Draining Kiss does absolutely nothing to me, and I'm just going to go for a Taunt, which forces him out essentially, because he can't Synth, he can't do anything, uh, and he's going to U-turn out, and now his Comfy's at 15%, uh, he's going to go straight into the Greninja, and I'm just going to swap into my check to, to the Greninja being the Amoongus, he goes for the Water Shuriken, trying to knock me out, as uh, I'm going to take no damage from that, I do see Life Orb, doesn't matter, he goes for the Ice Beam, doesn't freeze me, uh, luckily for me, uh, and I go for the Gig Drain, knock out his Greninja, Greg Ninja, and he's going to go back into Venomoth, and uh, once again, I can just swap out to Arrow immediately here. Nothing to fear, he goes for Roost, uh, and I'm going to go for the Aerial Ace and knock out the Venomoth, it doesn't have any boosts, and then the Comfy comes in, and this is a 4-0 win for your Montreal Hapsalls! So, uh, that's uh, very unfortunate Stone Edge misses. Uh, the, the play on the Venomoth, uh, I'm not going to give myself credit for it, honestly. I don't know what it was that made me switch. Uh, I was thinking, he can sub, he can sub, he can sub. And then he just didn't, and I switched out to Silvali, and I don't know what in his mind made him click uh, Savage Spin out right there, but uh, I don't know, man. There, were, there was just uh, it was it was constant 50/50s every turn, and I wanted to avoid them, and I think David wanted to avoid them too, so he just fired off the attack, uh, maybe thinking that he could still win the game with just Terrakion. Uh, but of course, Stone Edge does have to hit for that to happen. So uh, that's the game, guys. Uh, we do take a 4-0 win. We start off the season uh, the right way with uh, with a big win this week. Uh, next week, we are taking on Aberforth and his uh, Newcastle Umbreon. We've played them uh, twice before in the past, once in uh, NPL Season 5 when we replaced Rob and once in the D-League. I've won both games, uh, so I'm looking to win that one as well. Uh, he's got a pretty uh, pretty threatening team to me as well. There's a couple of Mons on there that I don't really want to deal with and that are going to be really, really spooky for me. So uh, you guys will see the matchup next week. But anyway, um, GG to David, uh, or BG, out of G RNGG, I don't know what you want to say uh, about this one. The two Sonas misses sucked. Uh, definitely go and check out his side. Uh, I'm sure he's going to give his thoughts on that and uh, as to why he clicked Savage Spin out the turn that he did. Uh, definitely go and check him out in the description. I love David. David's an awesome... Uh, an awesome guy we're, we're constantly in call he's he's really really chill uh and i love uh i love talking to him and i love playing him too and there's uh i mean he's, he beat me fair and square in the, the replay that i showed you guys before so uh you know this guy's he, he he's very good and he's uh I'm, I'm sure he's gonna bounce back from this loss uh and he's gonna have a, a decent season so definitely go and check him out link in the description as well as every other coach down there in the npl as well uh if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to leave a like down below subscribe as always if you haven't already and uh, i will catch you guys next week peace